Okay, smarty pants, answer this one. Do you know what earthquake magnitudes actually feel like? Well, at magnitude 1, you wouldn't notice a thing. At 3, you might slosh your coffee if you're drinking. At 5, things can start to shake off shelves, and it definitely gets your heart racing. But at 7.5, that's when the ground itself rips, buildings sway, and whole streets can split. And now, scientists warn a fault we thought wasn't active anymore could unleash something that strong under a small sleepy town in Canada. Now, if you trace your finger across a map of northwestern Canada, you'll find Dawson City in the Yukon. It looks like a nice place to escape from civilization. After all, it only has about 1,600 residents. It's quiet, remote, and famous for its gold rush past. In the late 1890s, Dawson City ballooned into a boom town almost overnight as prospectors chase gold. Today, the rush is long gone, but the town still looks the part. Wooden boardwalks and saloon-style facades give it the feel of a set straight out of a Western movie. Oh, and beneath all of that is a fracture in the earth itself. Dawson City is located on top of what's known as the Tintina Fault. It's a massive crack in the Earth's crust that stretches for hundreds of miles toward Alaska. Until recently, scientists believed that this zone had been inactive for over 40 million years. But newer studies tell a different story. Just a quick reminder, faults are giant cracks when two slabs of Earth's crust meet. They're always trying to slide past each other, but their jagged edges catch and lie. Pressure builds for decades, continuously bending and straining the rock. Then, suddenly, the locked zone breaks, and the slabs slip into a new position in just seconds. That abrupt lurch releases all the stored energy, sending seismic waves racing outward. The ground-shaking consequence is called an earthquake. Scientists say the ground on each side of Tatina has been trying to slide past itself for ages, but it's stuck. And now, that stuck zone has built up around 20 feet of strain. That's how far the land would shift sideways if it all gave at once. That's not just a small crack. That's straight up something from a disaster movie. If all that built-up tension snaps in one go, the result could be a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. How strong is that? Well, pretty strong. So what happens during a big quake? The shaking can last up to 30 seconds or more, which is an eternity when the walls are swaying and the floor feels like it's rolling under your feet. If you're near the fall, things can get really scary. The ground doesn't just shake, it could take a big step sideways. This can lead to some mm, renovations. Roads might get a new zigzag pattern, and unreinforced buildings could decide to do the twist. And if it happens in a Canadian winter, let's just say it could turn a simple power outage into a survival horror adventure. Being on soft soil is like sitting on wobbly jelly. It amplifies the shaking. Solid rock is a bit more stable. However, it's still dangerous. For example, in Mexico in 2003, a 7.5 quake damaged over 43,000 homes, buckled roads, and cut power for miles. In Sulawesi in 2018, the same magnitude not only leveled buildings, but triggered a tsunami and liquefaction. The whole neighborhood was swallowed as the ground turned to quicksand. Now here's something interesting. Most people don't think of Canada as an earthquake country, but it actually gets around 5,000 quakes a year. However, they're so small that you'd never feel them. The real hot spot is the West Coast, near British Columbia. That's where you hear people whisper about the infamous big one. It refers to a future megathrust earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone, a massive fault that runs for 600 miles just offshore. Unlike Tintina's sideways slip, Cascadia works by one tectonic plate shoving under another. For centuries, the North American plate has been bent upward like a spring as the Juan de Fuca plate has been diving below. When it finally snaps, that's a magnitude 9.0, more than 30 times stronger than a 7.5. We know it can happen because it already has. The last big one struck in 1700. It was so powerful, it didn't just shake the Pacific Northwest. It launched a tsunami across the ocean that smacked Japan, 
where villagers recorded an orphan wave with no local quake to explain it. Only later did scientists connect the dots. Now this brings us to the fact that despite all this, the size of the fault, the quiet buildup of strain, and the potential for a magnitude 7.5 earthquake, the Tatina Fault isn't even listed on Canada's official seismic hazard map, at least for now. That means no warnings, no color-coded danger zones. And when a fault isn't on the map, nobody designs a building for it. There's no proper preparation. You don't build reinforced structures or have seismic codes, especially when people don't expect that the ground could split open. Now, to be honest, that's not someone's mistake. The fault just didn't show any signs of being active recently. And this part of Canada is really big, quiet, and doesn't have a lot of monitoring. Not until too long ago, people had thought of the Tatina as just a geological oddity, something cool for looking at the past, but not really relevant for the future. For years, the Tatina fault flew under the radar. But that changed when researchers brought high-tech gear. They uncovered subtle but clear land shifts near Dawson City. They looked like scars on the landscape and pointed to past earthquakes, including one that pushed the land nearly 3,000 feet over millions of years. Now interestingly, newer glacial features showed no signs of disruption, which means the last major quake probably happened right before the end of the last ice age. In geologic terms, that's pretty recent. When scientists lined up those land shifts with the ages of glaciers, the picture was clear. The Tatina Fault isn't retired, it's just been on a really long coffee break. And now, it's itching to clock back in. That's why researchers want it officially on Canada's seismic hazard map. Dawson City deserves more than a shrug emoji when the ground decides to stretch. The experts are basically playing detective with dirt. They're scanning forests and rivers for faint scars that past earthquakes tried to hide. They're digging trenches like archaeologists with a taste for chaos, flipping through the Earth's diary one muddy page at a time. Every crack, wrinkle, and layer adds to the story of when Tatina last threw a tantrum and how loud the next one could be. It's pretty cool that satellites can literally track if one side of a valley is slowly creeping ahead of the other, like tectonic snail racing. The goal is to find out how often this fault snapped in the past, how much stress it's still holding on to today, and whether it's going to go off quietly or all at once. Finally, just because you know that plates are pushing against each other underneath, you still can't put a date on it. Long stretches of silence might mean the rocks are getting ready for something huge, or they could just be releasing stress in tiny ways that go unnoticed. Scientists can model possibilities, but no one has a countdown clock for the next rupture. The smartest mindset isn't prediction, it's preparation. You brace for the plausible, not the precise. Because the Earth's schedule doesn't come with reminders. It turns out the Earth's crust is always fidgeting. It's just that our maps are a little behind on the gossip. A fault everyone thought was harmless might actually be sitting on a magnitude 7.5 size secret. But don't worry, this isn't a cue to panic. It's a cue to get smart. Better data, sturdier buildings, and a few just-in-case habits. When the ground finally decides to settle its debt, what really matters isn't whether Dawson City feels the shake. It's whether everyone's prepared enough to turn a potential disaster into just a real wild story to tell later. Hey, have you ever been in an earthquake? I have. Tell me your story in the comments. An earthquake in Indonesia began in 1829 and lasted a mighty 32 years. It reached its climax in 1861 and hit a magnitude of around 8.5. It was caused by the tectonic plates below the island slowly clashing against each other. Researchers discovered that the quake had been building for some time after analyzing the coral in the area. They found it was being periodically exposed to the open air. That was caused by the gradual earthquake moving the land up and down. Scientists call these decades-long silent earthquakes slow slip events. A single lightning bolt can warm the air to around 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
the heat makes the air expand quickly, creating a shockwave, or boom, which we know to be thunder. There are close to 3 trillion trees on Earth. That translates to roughly around 422 trees for every person. Before humans, the number was nearer to 6 trillion. Almost 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, which on average is around 2.5 miles deep. 97% of Earth's volcanoes lie underwater. As well as the Mid-Ocean Ridge, a massive mountain range that is over 40,000 miles long. Humans have mined around 190,000 tons of gold from the planet. Experts predict there is around 20% still left to be mined, but this figure is constantly changing. The world's largest active volcano is in Hawaii. Called Mauna Loa, it's over 2.5 miles above sea level. Given that most of it is underwater, the volcano's summit is a staggering 11 miles from its base. That's the same length as over 160 football fields. The highest ever recorded temperature on Earth was a sweltering 136 degrees Fahrenheit. It was recorded in El Azizia, or modern-day Libya, on September 13, 1922. The lowest temperature was a chilling minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit, recorded at Russia's Vostok Station in 1983. Earth is the fifth largest planet in the solar system, behind Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It has a circumference of roughly 25,000 miles, and it would take the average person around 8,300 hours to walk around the face of the Earth. The separation between Earth's land masses would make such a trek almost impossible, though. It takes 365.25 days for the Earth to orbit the Sun. Because our calendar years only have 365 days, we add an extra leap day every four years to make up for the difference. Russia is the largest country on the planet, with a total area of about 6.5 million square miles. It encompasses more than one-eighth of the Earth's inhabited land area, but still has a relatively small population given its size. Earth is the only planet with one moon. Mercury and Venus have no moons, while every other planet has two or more. Earth is over 4 billion years old. Scientists calculate this by looking at the planet's oldest rocks, as well as meteorites that have crash-landed. They used meteorites as they were formed at the same time as Earth, when the solar system was forming. The ground we walk on is basically recycled. The planet's rock cycle turns igneous rocks to sedimentary ones, then transforms those into metamorphic rocks and back again. Like Earth, our Moon also experiences earthquakes. They're less common and intense than the ones we have and are caused by tidal stresses. A tidal stress is basically the relationship between the gravitational pull of the Moon on the Earth and that of the Earth on the Moon. Despite being the fifth largest continent, Antarctica holds 70% of the planet's fresh water and about 90% of its ice. Bangkok is the most visited city in the world, boasting 23 million visitors in 2019 alone. Paris, London, Dubai, and Singapore make up the other cities in the top five. The lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere is called the troposphere and is the reason we have weather. Sunlight heats the planet's surface, which causes warm air to rise up to the troposphere. This air then expands and cools as the air pressure decreases and sinks down where it is then warmed by the Earth again. Coral reefs are the largest living structures on the planet, with some even being visible from space. Coral reefs hold the most species per area of any of Earth's ecosystems, even more than rainforests. Earth got its name around 1,000 years ago, and it comes from the German word meaning the ground. But there's no evidence to show who actually named it. Of all the planets, Earth is also the only one which is not named after a Greek or Roman deity. The deepest point of the ocean is the Mariana Trench. It's a whopping 7 miles below sea level. Coastlines cover about 20% of U.S. land, but are home to more than 50% of the U.S. population. The Earth isn't actually a sphere. It's more like a squished ball that bulges at the equator. The bulge is caused by the force of the Earth spinning, 
which makes the North and South Poles slightly flat. The Earth spins on its axis, which is basically an imaginary straight line. Earth has seasons because the axis is tilted, causing the sun's rays to hit different parts of the planet more directly, depending on the time of year. If the sun was as tall as a standard door, the Earth would be around the size of a nickel. The Earth's rate of rotation is gradually decreasing. It's happening so slowly that it would take as much as 140 million years for the length of a day to increase to 25 hours. Get equipped for any season with brand new Brightside merch. Click the link and grab your print. The biggest animal on Earth is the Antarctic blue whale. It can reach lengths of 100 feet and weigh up to 400,000 pounds, which is around the same as 33 elephants. The temperature at the center of the Earth is around the same as the surface of the Sun, at almost 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Earth is around 10,000 times older than humans. Earth is around 4.5 billion years old, whereas humans have been around for, at most, 450,000 years. There are around 34,000 known species of fish. The actual number is way higher, though, as a whopping 95% of our oceans still haven't been explored. America's Route 66 is longer than the journey to the Earth's core. The distance to the core is roughly 2,000 miles. Route 66 is almost 2,500 miles. The Earth is made up of three main components, the crust, the mantle, and the core, which is divided into the outer core and the inner core. Scientists have estimated that there are around 8.7 million species on the planet. Out of this, between 1 to 2 million of these species are animals. But roughly 86% of land species and 91% of fish have yet to be discovered by humans. Ancient astronomers used to think that the Earth was the center of the universe. For 2,000 years, they believed the Earth to be static, while other bodies traveled in orbit around us. In 1543, Copernicus published his sun-centered model of the solar system. Earth is the densest planet in the solar system. The density varies across its different crusts, but the planet's average density is just over 3 ounces per cubic inch. Mount Everest is the highest point on the planet. Its peak is the highest altitude above sea level, at around 5.5 miles. Each year, one septillion crystals of snow fall on Earth. That's a trillion trillion snowflakes. Snow covers about 31% of Earth's land area each year. Of Earth's water, only around 3% is fresh water. The other 97% is salted. Of that 3%, about 2% is frozen in ice and glaciers. So, less than 1% of the planet's fresh water is actually in lakes, rivers, and underground. The world's largest inland body of water, or lake to us normal people, is the Caspian Sea. It has an area of 140,000 miles squared. The world's deepest lake is Lake Baikal in Russia and is 5,300 feet deep. Earth's atmosphere is roughly 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, with small amounts of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. No other planet is believed to have this much oxygen, which explains why Earth is the only planet where life has been discovered so far. Apart from the Moon, there are two asteroids in co-orbital orbits with Earth, sometimes called Earth's second moon. 3753 Kruthni is an asteroid that looks like it's following the Earth in orbit, but it's actually following its own path around the Sun. 2002 AA29 is another asteroid which makes a horseshoe orbit around the Earth that draws it close to the planet every 95 years. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.